Hello everyone, today we will be cheating in our own game for development purposes. Not like Call of Duty cheating, more like boost your productivity kind of cheating. At the end of this video you will have your very own cheat engine, where you can be the god of your own game. You will be able to do things like increase the jump force by 10 or slow down time by 50%. We are going to take inspiration from two places. First, from old school games like Age of Empire, Crash Bandicoot or even Rainbow Six. Look at this. Type enter, then type pepperoni pizza and you get a thousand food. This is great, golden age of gaming. Second, let's borrow the leader key concept from famous Linux tools like Tmux or NeoVim. Sounds fancy, but it's nothing more than a combination of keys that helps you create custom shortcuts. So it works like this. The player inputs the leader key combination and then the next thing that will be typed will be evaluated as a cheat. That's all, let's get to work. I've started a new project and made a small level using ProBuilder. I imported Unity's first person controller starter asset and gave him a gun, so you take him seriously. Right now, all I can do is what the starter asset has to offer, run around, sprint and jump. Oh, those checker patterns? They are from my free texture pack. You can download it on my website. It's completely free, it's just a zip file. And if you recently started developing games, I have a free guide to help you develop games faster and avoid common mistakes. It's very practical and it has tons of fun illustrations in it. The link is below. Unity's starter asset uses a new input system and I assume you at least used it once. So let's open the input action asset. Let's add a new action by clicking the plus button. I'll name it leader. By default, it adds a standard one key binding, but we need something else. Click on this plus button and choose add binding with two modifiers. The other one you can delete. The first modifier will be the left shift key on the keyboard. And the second modifier will be the left alt key. Finally, for the actual binded key, I'll take one that is far away, like P. That's our leader key, Shift Alt P. Oh, you can also make sure that it's being used in the keyboard and mouse control scheme. And after that, save the asset. Let's move on. Create two scripts, a cheat input listener and a cheat manager. Cheat input listener goes on the player or anywhere where you are getting your inputs. And cheat manager can go on a new empty game object, also called cheat manager. In cheat input listener, import the input system Remove everything and add a new method. On leader, because our action is called leader, and as a parameter we put input value, value. Before we move on, just save and test if this works. If it works, great, it means you are using the input system correctly. Now, listening to cheats means that we have to listen to every key. And there is a relatively easy way to do that via scripts. You don't need to map every key in the action map, that would be pretty horrible. There is also an any key binding, but somehow this just gave me true or false if the key is pressed or if any key is pressed. So that's good for other purposes. I didn't actually get the name of that key. So we will be using the on any button press API to get all the keys. Get all the keys. First, we have to import utilities from the input system. This particular API is event-based. So in onEnable, we will register our onAnyKey method to the onAnyButton press. <clears throat> because we are disciplined developers, we will also stop listening to the event when this object is disabled. So call gives us back an object that implements iDisposable. This comes from system, so we import that as well. Now, we store the result in a private field and in on disable, we can dispose of it. On any key here, we receive an input control object. And this has all the information we need. This class is only responsible for listening to keys. It will send the work to the cheat manager. Let's not overthink it. And let's say that the cheat manager is a singleton. We take the instance and call start cheating on on leader and call add key by giving the name of the key in the any key method. It's all read, but it's done. Now we can implement this in the cheat manager class. In cheat manager, let's define a world class singleton using a public static instance. And in awake, we set the instance to this. Some people might get triggered that I don't check if this instance exists and then destroy this, blah, blah, blah. Well, it's not needed 
at all. I'm not stupid. I know exactly where I create a cheat manager. There is nowhere in this universe that I will be creating two cheat managers. So I don't need to do those checks. All right. I'll define the two methods, add some print statements, and then we can consider this a checkpoint. Let's save and test it out. It works and we get every single key we press. That's good, but we will have to do some filtering. Before we move on, this video is sponsored by, oh, no one. Okay, it is self-sponsored. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this content because this helps a lot. And you can join my Discord server if you're interested to discuss more about game dev. The link is below. Now let's talk about the format of the cheats. Again, inspired by geeky Vim goodness, I'll define cheats as two letters followed by a number. For example, GP10 would mean jump plus 10. So we type leader key followed by GP and then a number. We will store cheats in a dictionary to be able to look them up easily. The key is a string and the value is an action with an int. I'll define a method load cheats that we also call in awake. There we initialize the dictionary and we will fill it up with cheats. Our first cheat will be a test one. So double T also pronounced, yeah, never mind. It will have as a value the cheat test method defined below. It's important that it has an int parameter and to not put parentheses here. I nearly forgot. To use action, you have to import Unity Engine dot events at the top. We use a leader key to stop typing a cheat, but what if we don't want to cheat? Or we made a mistake, or we want to validate the cheat? There are many ways to solve it, and I've decided to keep it pretty simple using a timer. So when you start a cheat, you have one or two seconds to enter the cheat, and every time you type a character, the timer resets. You know, to please the slow typers. At the end of the timer, we check the cheat. So we add three fields, a public float timeout, a boolean cheating, and a float cheating deadline. When we start cheating, we set cheating to true and reset the timer. I multiply the timer by time scale for a specific reason that I will show you at the end of this video. When we implement the last cheat. In update, we check if we are cheating. And if yes, we check if the deadline passed and stop cheating at that moment. Save and test. Type the leader key. And after two seconds, you should see the stop cheating message. All right, now onto the validation. Let's import from system text and regular expressions. Yeah. I know, fun times ahead. We will track the keys in a string, and for that we will use a string builder for no particular reason other than that I like the append method. So in start and stop cheating, we flush the string builder by creating a new one. Finally, here's the add key method. If we are cheating, we reset the timer to give the player more time to type. If you check the console, you will see that we get really all the keys, even left shift, space, arrow up, but we only want single letters or digits. With a small regular expression, we can make sure to only get single characters. We then append those to the string builder and that's it. Great, now that we are filling up our string builder, we can finally try to match the input to our cheats. In update, if the timer is up, we call a new method called tryCheat and pass our string that we have built. tryCheat will attempt to split the command into the two letters and the rest as numbers. By default, the command is a cheat and the value will be zero. We brutally do a try catch while taking the first two letters and pass the rest as an integer. The command should be in the dictionary of cheats. So we do a try get value, which allows us to get the method as output. If we got something, and here's the cool stuff about actions, we can call the method we were storing in the dictionary and pass the value. Oh, and this is how you do a fancy print. Let's try it out. Leader key, then GG, and then some numbers. Wait for it, it works. It shows us that it tried this cheat. Leader TT and it matches. So test cheat is successful as well. All right, now it's time to implement all our cheat codes. The first person controller of this data asset is pretty open and the fields are all public. So we will abuse that and modify those directly. This means that we have to import starter assets and add a reference to the first person controller. Here are my cheats. MS to change the move speed, SS to change the sprint speed, JP to increase the jump height, JM to reduce the jump height, GR to change the gravity, and in a few seconds I also have one last very cool cheat. Let's implement all those methods. I think I don't need to explain what is happening here. Just play with that and, and have fun. Just make sure that every method has an int parameter. The last cheat will be TS, to change the time scale. Time scale is by default at one. If you set it at 0.5, your game runs at 50% slow motion. This cheat will take the value, divide it by 10, 
and use that to scale the time. I clamp the value so the player can just go between 20% and 100%. We have to update the fixed delta time as well, which we made sure to remember the initial value on our wake. And now back to the reset timer. If you don't multiply by the time scale, well, in slow motion, the timer will also be slowed. So this makes sure that your timeout is the same real world duration for you. You don't want to suddenly have to wait 10 seconds for your cheats to apply or to change back. And there you go, your very own cheat engine. Pretty simple, but pretty flexible. As always, you can bring this to the next level using more events, if you know what I mean. But one tip is to keep the cheap engine as isolated as possible from the rest of your game. You want to be able to easily deactivate it or delete it from your game once you ship it, if you don't want any of your players to access those cheats by any mistake. All right, as always, thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time and now go work on your game. Quick update, the previous UI video got really good feedback and many of you asked to see part two, which will cover uh, the logic or more like the controller for actually um, manipulating what data is being shown and how it is being shown. So uh, this is planned. I'm working currently on it. It's in the pipeline. It will come after this video. So stay tuned.